Welcome to the weekend in Harton and Clean Park and wherever you're joining us from this weekend. This weekend our worship is led for us by Diane Lee with readings by Val Clark and the gospel and sermon led for us by the Reverend Giles Kendall. For many churches this is Bible Sunday, a week the last Sunday after Trinity where we look at how powerful scripture is to us and how its truth should be the truth which underpins our life. For other churches, it's their dedication day or a patronal festival if they don't have uh, a dedication. It's St Jude's patronal festival and so I am presiding and preaching at St Jude's instead of in Harton and Cleden Park. Um, it's a joy to be sharing with the people of Reckondike this weekend and to come back and join Harton and Cleden Park as we worship online together. This coming week is half term, so well done everyone who has made it to half term. It's been a joy to have our toddlers back. Uh, congratulations to the St Peter's toddler group, the leaders and the people who've come for making it through their first term and getting to half term. There is a week off for our toddler group leaders and helpers this week through half term and they will be back uh, from Monday of next week as we join into November. If you have got children at home, grandchildren or children, whether if you have got time on a Monday morning or a Tuesday morning or a Thursday afternoon and you would like to come along to our toddler groups at St Peter's in the church hall on Mondays, at St Cuthbert's in the church hall on Tuesday mornings, Thursday afternoons, you would be very welcome after half term. We also brought our rainbows back to St Mark and St Cuthbert's this week just gone. They also have a week off and they will be back next uh, week after half term two and I think that the St Peter's groups are back also so there is just that extending sense of normality coming through but numbers are not ideal and I saw a rather scary headline earlier this week that said uh, make sure that you take care now to save Christmas let's hope that Christmas is going to be as we would want it to be certainly our plans for Christmas are well in place and they will be being uh, notified around and advertised before too long when we hope that we will be able to stick with a plan A for Christmas. This coming weekend, Saturday morning, we will see another coffee morning at St Peter's, 10 o'clock till about half past 11, coffee morning at St Peter's. That will be the 30th. Maybe there'll be a Halloween-ish theme. Perhaps there'll be lots of orange icing. Can't imagine why. Uh, on Sunday next week, we will be celebrating the Feast of All Saints in both churches and online. There will be the Feast of All Saints will be our worship in the building and online on Sunday. It's Halloween, so we don't want people to need to come out on Halloween. So our All Souls service, which sometimes took place on the evening of All Saints, will be on All Souls Day, the 2nd of November. So at St Peter's there will be a memorial service at 3pm and at 7pm and anyone is welcome to come to those with uh, people they have lost now or recently or long ago on their hearts. You are very welcome. There'll be refreshments after those memorial services. They will be identical uh, repeated just in case you don't want to come out in the dark. On Wednesday morning the service at St Peter's, the 10 o'clock midweek service at St Peter's will also have an all souls feel and uh, that's the 3rd of November and the 3rd of November in the afternoon at St Mark and St Cuthbert's Friends Together will also hold an all souls service. So if you want to remember people that you have lost uh, this year uh, through Covid or, or further time ago then you are welcome to do that as we begin that period of remembrance tide. But we begin that next Saturday with coffee morning um, as we go into that uh, week through. This coming week there is little to do apart from rest and recoup and we hope that we will see everybody in worship uh, in the building next weekend or in celebrating uh, being together and community by joining us for coffee. There's also coffee after Wednesday morning services at St Peter's so if you come along at 10 o'clock you will get communion and if you come along at half past 10 you'll get coffee. If you come along and stay for both you'll get both. We are now beginning to pick up home communion so if you have people or if you are 
watching or listening online and you are not really uh, strong enough or not confident enough to be worshipping in the building and you would like communion coming out to you then please let me know because we will do that over this coming week while it's quieter with other things and into a regular pattern so that we'll be there. I can't believe quite how far, how near we are to Christmas, how quickly it's come round. Let's hope that this next season, the season of remembrance, as we leave ordinary time behind, this is the last Sunday of ordinary time, as we leave ordinary time behind, we uh, begin to uh, change the clocks. Don't forget that next week's worship will be an hour different because the clocks will have gone spring forward, fall back. Clocks will have gone back. Uh, just in advance of Sunday worship next week. Um, we are beginning to uh, bring ourselves back inside with the cold and the dark. So as we do that and prepare for the winter, please stay safe, be blessed, and we shall see you soon. Enjoy worship this evening as we celebrate Bible Sunday, the last of the Sundays after Trinity, or in the case of St. Jude's, we congratulate them on their patronal festival and we look to the year to come. Welcome to everyone on behalf of Harton and Cleden Park South Shields to our online service wherever you may be. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am.
The Lord be with you and also with you. The Lord our God reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy and give him glory. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with us. He is our stronghold. God will help at the break of day. God is our refuge and truth ready to help whenever we are in trouble. We will not fear, even if the earth shakes and the mountains topple into the sea. Come now and look at the works of the Lord, the awesome things he has done on earth. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord is with us. He is our stronghold. God will help us at the break of day. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest who name is love whoever lives and pleads for me my name is graven on his hands my name is written on his heart I know that while in heaven he stands no tongue can bid me thence depart no tongue can bid me Satan tempts me to despair And tells me of the guilt within Upward I look and see him there Who made an end to all my sin Because the sinless Savior died My sinful soul is counted free
A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. For this is the Lord. Sing loud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labour. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save, able to save completely those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. This he did once for all, when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord is the good news announced to you. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It seems very hard for humans to accept that a living and loving relationship with God can only be found by faithfully following the commands of God. Unless we can walk the walk, it's all just posturing. Humans have a commitment problem, maybe. There are many examples throughout history and in everyday life where we avoid the responsive, loving relationship that God offers. Instead, we invest in actions or rituals that seem to avoid deeds. We are very good at talking the talk, but go out of our way to avoid walking the walk. As we approach the COP26 very soon now, and yet invest more in fossil fuel subsidies than ever before, this would seem to be in no doubt. The story we find in Judah in the time of Jeremiah in the 6th century BC is one where the people of God seem to believe 
but the sacrifices and religious observance around the temple in Jerusalem is how you go about having a loving relationship with God. Religious life is just for that. And Jeremiah gets into all kinds of trouble because he says the people are living a delusion. They cannot shape the world with animal sacrifices. They cannot take the place of God. The people set their faith upon rituals, buildings and institutions and forget that God actually rules the world. Jeremiah is speaking truth to power. And the king gets fed up with Jeremiah's inconvenient message that he should listen to what God is saying to him and change his behaviour. By chapter 38, he decides to lower Jeremiah into the Jerusalem cistern, maybe a sewer, so that he can't speak the word of God in the marketplace anymore. Marcus Rashford, watch out. The reason Jeremiah appears in the Bible, though, is because he was proved to be right by the way things turned out. That was the mark of a true prophet. Their words came true, which showed that they had truly proclaimed God's message to the people. Jeremiah is ultimately vindicated by God. Bartimaeus in Mark 10 is sitting by the road out of Jericho in darkness. He is blind, which means that no money and being outside of temple religion. Maybe there are similarities to being in the sewer in Jerusalem. People believed that illness was a sign from God that you or your ancestors had sinned. The illness was God's punishment and the person was ritually unclean until they were cured. Such a person would be shut out of the temple and often be shut out of society. Things seem to have gone back to the way they were in the days of Jeremiah in the temple in Jerusalem. Of course, Jesus often preaches just the opposite message to what people thought. People and the temple priests were talking about God's commands rather than keeping them, according to Jesus. Here was Bartimaeus, a Jewish brother in need, but no one is helping him or sharing the good things God has given them with him. These are the commands of God throughout the Old Testament. Care for the poor, the outcasts and the widow. They are also part of the bedrock of Jesus' own message to people. Jesus walks the walk because when Bartimaeus asks him, Jesus heals him. Jesus says to Bartimaeus, your faith has made you well. He doesn't take the credit for himself, but he empowers Bartimaeus, acknowledging how Bartimaeus has opened himself to a loving, responsive relationship with God. Bartimaeus connects to God through the faithful belief that Jesus can heal him and he is healed. Although he is blind, Bartimaeus sees that Jesus is from God and full of God's power. Now, Bartimaeus could have run off to celebrate like the nine lepers. He could have gone to the priest to be declared cured and sins forgiven because the cure would be the sign of God's forgiveness. And therefore, he would ritually be allowed back into society. That would have been perfectly acceptable to a society that was only interested in talking the talk. But Bartimaeus's gratitude is seen in how he gets up and follows Jesus. He is literally going to walk the walk by following Jesus around. Maybe he becomes one of a huge crowd of disciples who seem to follow Jesus about the countryside in addition to the twelve. Jesus doesn't take any financial or religious advantage of Bartimaeus either. Unlike the priests, there is no charge and no obligation. With Jesus, it is always an active invite. Come and see is the kind of thing that Jesus says. This is not some kind of transaction, but a gift of grace. Jesus does not judge or condemn. He simply recognises the gift of loving faith that Bartimaeus gives, and Jesus graciously receives it. Even though he is blind, Bartimaeus can still love. Jesus sees and is merciful. The priests are blind, but Jesus sees true is another aspect of this. The priests cannot see the worth in Bartimaeus, and whilst he is blind, they condemn him to poverty and do nothing to relieve his needs. Jesus loves Bartimaeus, and he calls out the worth because he sees it. 
Mark's gospel is probably written down after 70 AD, the year the temple and Jerusalem are destroyed by the Romans, just as Jeremiah foretold God's judgment for a people who disregarded the commands of God and used religion for their own comforts. So the same fate befalls the second temple of Roman hands, maybe. This seems to be what Mark is presenting us with. Jesus calls people to action by living out the command of God in their lives, but most reject him, the son of God. And what does it mean for us today? I'm only a little person. I don't have very much influence. So how can I walk the walk? When we're faced with the environmental catastrophe that's being talked about, uh, it's overwhelming, maybe. If governments and those with money and power refuse to, what difference can I make? I guess that Jesus was only a single person, but he had a huge effect on people and changed the way they thought and saw themselves. We're not Jesus, of course. But Bartimaeus is inspired to get up and follow, as were the 12 and the 500 and all the other disciples that followed Jesus. And following means imitating the lifestyle and living out the message. We can certainly choose to live simply, to have a light foot on the environment, and even if it's only in our own gardens, to care for the earth in what we plant and how we look after the garden. The food we choose to eat has a big effect on the environment, so we have influence there as well. We can make it our message as a church to support the poor and the outcasts, to welcome the refugees and the homeless. In conversations with our friends and contacts, we can stand up for those who have no voices and no means of support. Jesus and his friends did exactly the same, no more. And the effect was huge, as witnessed by us telling his story and that of the people he came from 2,000 years later. Amen.
God calls us to peace. It's God's justice is our peace. Christ calls us to be God's people. In Christ is our peace. And peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with the power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, we pray for the courage to tell out your truth without fear and to work for your kingdom with joy. We give thanks for the freedom to worship and to listen to your word in peace. May we be attentive to it as a church and hear each word calling us afresh, bringing us blessing and sending us as blessing. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. Holy God, we pray for our lawmakers and our law keepers that they might work to uphold what is just and true. We pray for our peacemakers and our peacekeepers, that they might uphold love over fear. We pray for those places in our world where democracy is fragile or non-existent, where lip service only is paid to justice and to truth, where the love of neighbour depends on their colour or creed or politics. Lord, Hear your people and answer our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all those who suffer in our community, those who struggle to rejoice in your law, your presence or your world, for those imprisoned by guilt or shame or trapped by physical frailty, illness or despair. May they know the transformation of their lives by your spirit within them. We pray for all who care for those they love, family, friend or neighbour, obeying your command. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. Holy God, we remember those who, dying in faith, rejoice to see you as you are. We thank you for their example and commend them to your peace forever. We pray for those who are making that journey now and for those who watch and wait and grieve. We pray this week for the families of Margaret Richardson and Jimmy McCullough. And we remember those who are already on another shore, Joseph Kell and William Bland. For all in need and who mourn, we pray for consolation and hope and healing. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. Holy God, watch over us as we try to live out your truth, loving you with all our hearts and our minds and all our souls and our neighbours as ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light. Amen. Though many, we are one body in Christ, we belong to one another. By God's grace, we have different gifts. We will use them in faith. Rejoice in hope, stand firm in trouble, be constant in prayer. Filled with his spirit, we will serve the Lord. Eternal God, giver of love and life, your son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name.
Christ the Lord.